So welcome back to the channel guys, welcome to the, the latest video. Um, I'll start off by showing you the Triumph engine. So there will probably be um, the previous bits of machining added to the start of this video because I've done quite a bit of machining to it and uh, and now the bottom end's built. But I'll, um, I'll show you how far we've got with it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll quickly show the machining that we've done to it and then I'll switch this video back on and record where we're at at the moment. So on the Triumph engine, I'm just gapping the new piston rings. Um, it's a good job I've checked to be honest because these gaps are, are, are way too tight. The, the top ring's down to 4 thou, so I'm going to open them up today, get them ready. I've checked the weight on the pistons and they're, they're all within half a half a gram of each other um, I've taken the old pistons off the conrods there so I'm now going to balance the conrods end to end the flywheel which I machined yesterday is in the wash and the crank assembly which I balanced yesterday that's all now done so I've just got to polish the crankshaft journals uh, get it through the cleaner again and then that's ready for me to put the bottom end together on So today I've had some bits turn up for the Triumph engine, the 1500 Triumph engine that I'm working on at the moment. I've had a vernier timing wheel turn up for it so we can get the cam timing bang on. Um, Kent Cams have already supplied the cam kit for me. And I did think I was putting it back on the um, standard timing wheel but my customer actually did say when he dropped it off that he wanted me to put a vernier on it and I forgot. So. Um, quick phone call to Andy at Kent Cams and he sorted that out for me so that's the that's the vernier for it and then I've also had a new test block turn up for my as new machine um, a friend of mine's dropped some Toyota injectors off to be tested in fact it's for the the players cylinder head that I did a couple of videos ago um, he wants to run the injectors up before he fires the car up. I know he's got the engine all built and everything now, and that looks great. He sent me some pictures of that. So the people that make the injector tester for me, they offered to, to do the injectors to save me having to buy the test block. But I've got to admit, I kind of like having all the equipment, really. So I just thought, sorry, I'm going to buy the, the adapter for it. So that's turned up today. So I can get Jamie's uh, injectors tested and get them back to him. And the other thing that's uh, <laughs> I find a little bit amazing is I bought a new cutter for my head skimmer, which is on back order. But while I was putting an order in, I thought I'd get a new wheel for my valve facer because if I can get to it. So my valve facer, I've I've never bought a I haven't bought a stone for it since I bought the machine. So I've had it for thought oh, I must be must be twelve years, I would guess. But I must admit, I'm not I'm not um heavy with the machine i don't mistreat it or anything i try and keep it in good order so i think i've had some good use out of it but i didn't realize how worn it was i mean it, it's virtually down to this uh boss here where you mount it to and uh, when i unpackaged the new wheel i thought i've got to be the wrong wheel it's massive <laughs> and that's the difference that's how much we've worn off the wheel which can't believe it to be honest i mean it's right down to that now it's sharp there now so yeah it was uh it looks like it was well overdue um a, a new one so um yeah got that now so i'll uh i'll get that fitted too um so yeah so thanks to uh andy at kent cams and tony at as new for for sending me those bits through and Clive at Fondera as well. Um, I can get on with um, getting these bits done now. So hopefully uh, the wife's at, uh, edited in the other machining that I've done to this so far and caught it up to date. And this is where we're at at the moment. This is going to be leaving today. Um, I'm not building it as a full engine because the customer wants to do some bits himself. Uh, but I've built the bottom end and I'm just now setting the cam timing. So it's a Kent Cams cam 
Kent cams, vernier, timing wheel. Um, it's got ARP big end bolts in it, ARP flywheel bolts, albeit I'm not fitting the flywheel. I think I videoed me balancing this engine and lightening the flywheel on a previous video. Um, so uh, you can see the Sharpie marks where I've written the, um, the weights of the pistons down. I've now captured true TDC of the engine with the DTI. So what I'm going to do now is put my pointer um, pointing at TDC on the Kent Cam's protractor. And then that will help me set my cam timing in degrees. The other thing that I'll show you quickly is the cylinder head. So the cylinder head, I freshly painted it actually, it's still a bit wet, so I can't really turn it over and show you. I will before um, the customer collects it, but this has got brand new, slightly larger, I think they're one and a half mil bigger valves. Let me get the GoPro underneath. That's not really showing it up very well. I'll turn it over in a bit. That's probably the best bet. Um, it's lead free converted, and then I've done a gas flowed cylinder head for it. So I've opened the exhaust ports right up, I've opened the inlets up and uh, blended them into the inlet manifold or the gasket. So I've got to just clean up the edges of paint, and then that's ready to go. The valve springs are fitted at the installed height, which is 34 mil. So that means that when the valve is closed, the distance between the bottom of the spring retainer and the spring platform is 34 millimeters. And that's on all of them. That gives the right poundage at a closed valve. There's a lot of other jobs going on, but what I'm going to do is I keep getting in trouble for filming too much and just having it all in one big long video. So I'm going to switch it off, do some more videoing later on the Triumph engine and then capture some more videos on other engines. So what I've done on the Triumph here is um, just roughly set the, <coughs> the cam timing up just to get me close. Um, because this is easy to get to at the front, what I've done is I've got the valve, the inlet valve at full lift. I've set the um, the crankshaft degrees to what Kent Cams recommend. I put the chain on, tweaked the vernier a little bit, <coughs> nipped it back up. But what I need to do now is turn the engine over a couple of times, um, take a reading at the dwell, so the tip of the um, camshaft, and then I'll do the valve in motion as well. So I'll, I'll do it before the, the needle on the DTI stops and then after so I can get a, a more accurate reading. And I'll do that three times so I know that the cam timing is, is roughly, well, it's bang on actually, not roughly, it will be bang on. Um, so yeah, that's that done. I'm going to now whip it over a few times and, and double check. So I'm going to turn it off <coughs> the, um, the flywheel end uh, simply because... It's very easy to get to at the moment, and what I don't want to do is turn this and risk moving any of this here. I'm going to have to turn the engine over twice, so 720 degrees of crankshaft rota uh, rotation, 360 degrees of camshaft rotation. So what I'll do is as we get close to TDC, I'll just check that my TDC mark hasn't moved, which it shouldn't have done. Cool, it hasn't. So now what's going to happen is the um, the inlet valve will start to open quite fiercely around this point.
A quick calculation in my head at the peak of the camp says it's about bang on. So what I'm gonna do now is turn it over again and do it valve in motion. to the other side of the engine so I can read my DTI a bit better. I'm going to put a tiny little bit of pressure on the DTI simply because there's no valve spring on this engine uh, because there's no cylinder head on it and because it's all built with build lube what I don't want is a chance of the following just stick, follower just sticking up on the on the build lube so I'm just going to hold the DTI down and if I get it to where it's roughly right calculator so when I check the time in valve in motion the, the actual cam timing needs moving a tad so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check it once more just to make sure and if I come up with the same reading or roughly the same reading then I'm going to just tweak the timing a little bit Yeah, I've come up with exactly the same reading. So what I'm going to do is just move the cam timing a little bit. When I fitted this, I loosened off all the vernier bolts and only nipped one just to lock it in position. So I've only got to undo the one bolt. And then I need to move the vernier to get it right by four degrees. So I'm just going to turn the engine in the rotation it needs to go and then you can see the vernier moving and then nip it back up so then we go around again to double check the figures Myself close again. One more slight tweak. And just one more go round and we should be absolutely bang on now. Kent cams recommend 104 degrees for um, 
full lift on the inlet valve. So we'll see exactly what we've got. Gonna go back the other way a little bit. I'm not happy with the vernier. Uh, the, sorry, the DTI. I think that just moved ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna go off that a bit. I want my readings to be really accurate, so best to make sure. Well, that's set absolutely spot on. So now I've got it spot on. One more rotation just to check. I know this seems quite a tedious thing to do, but I'd rather overkill the checking just so I'm absolutely 100% confident that when it's left here, it's uh, absolutely spot on. So what I'm doing now is taking a reading from a slightly different place. Yeah, absolutely spot on. So what I can do with that now is I'll go ahead and finish tightening the rest of the vernier bolts. I will then get the crankshaft at TDC but what I'll do is um, make sure that the TDC pointer hasn't moved so the cam time is all set on this now what I'm going to do is just check TDC it hasn't moved which it hasn't absolutely spot on so what I could do now is just finish off the few bits and then it's ready for the customer to collect so the Triumph engine's all complete now I ended up putting the cylinder head on for Dave he asked me to do that um, so I'm going to run it back to him because he's only got a jag or something like that so he's struggling to get it back to his house so I said I'd, I'd run it so I'm going to load it in the van and uh, drop it off for him. Try and get some pictures of the ports. But yeah, that should uh, should make his old car sing along, I would guess.